Before we get into the interview, I wanted to thank the China Culture Centre for supporting women's work and also for bringing notice to environmental issues, highlighting environmental issues. So thank you very much. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? I'm originally from Melbourne. I've been in Sydney for over 30 years. I was one of the people that started the art school at Western Sydney University. Um, my background, my training is in sculpture and I started the sculpture department at that university. So I practiced, my art practice was really always installation. Um, objects in space rather than just a single uh, sculptural object. Later on in my career I started doing video and so for the last 20 years I've mostly done video but have done a little bit of sculpture as well. Okay. Um, can you describe a real life situation that inspired you for your artwork? Oh, real life situation. I've always believed that there's Often in an artist's life, there are one or two really important works that they saw that changed how they thought about themselves and art. And for me, um, one of them, when I was a high school student, in fact, was going to the National Gallery of Victoria and seeing the Rodin sculpture of uh, Balzac. Um, it was, yeah, it was that it was, not just that it was big, but it was incredibly sculptural. And unlike other figurative sculptures that I'd seen in the past, and it wasn't that I aspired to make work like that, but it sort of opened my heart in some way. Yeah. But I think the most formative thing on my work was when I was an art student, the women's movement became very big in Australia in the late 70s, and that was the strongest influence, I think. So when did you start doing installation artworks, and uh, what makes you like have a turn uh, from sculpture to installation? Yeah. Like I said, I've always made installation. The first major one that I showed in public was at the Mildura Sculpture Triennial in 1973, in fact before I went to art school, um, and that work was an environmental work. It commented on the unusual sort of situation of Mildura, which was a totally irrigated community and agricultural site in the middle of the desert, uh, and the work commented on that. Installation, for me, offered greater possibilities for commenting on things like the environment than single autonomous sculptural objects did. And um, back in the 70s, it wasn't called installation. Um, it didn't have a proper name um, back then. Um, yeah, but it just offered a lot of possibilities. And also at that time, um, People were installing artworks in the landscape and so you had this possibility of working with the landscape and scattering elements through the landscape which if you stayed as an autonomous sculptural object sculptor, you couldn't take advantage of that. And the other question you asked me was why did I take up video? Um, always life intervenes in art. We're always balancing what we, as artists, we're always balancing what we uh, have to do in our lives and what we can do in our work. And for some people, it's how you balance family life and getting to the studio to make art. Um, for me, it was always my uh, work at the university and sometimes my family. So in the late 90s, my mother was in her final terminal illness and she was in Melbourne and I was going there all the time. And as you can imagine, it's not easy to make sculpture or sculptural objects if you're travelling all the time. So I thought, oh, I need to do something else. I need to have some art happening because it's very difficult. It was a very difficult situation watching your mother die. And, um, so I started doing video and I gradually uh, got better at it. 
found something I wanted to say with it and in really enjoyed the process of filming and editing. And I just kept doing more and more of it. For a long time I did both, sculptural installation and video, but the last few years it's mostly, mostly. The video work that I've, I have in this exhibition is um, called Incidents of Appearance and it's a phrase that scientists use when they're counting how many animals or birds are in a, a situation. So they can tell whether they're disappearing or thriving in an environment. So that's why I call this work Incidents of Appearance. And I was very conscious that birds are like other animals, um, other species. Birds are going extinct at quite a high rate. And uh, what we need to understand, of course, is that we share their fate. We are polluting the air and the water and they're the things that we need to survive, that we all need to survive. So what I have here are mostly sounds of birds that are really common. You know, they're cockatoos, uh, magpies, uh, butcher birds. They're all really common birds. We hear them all the time, even in the city. But this is no guarantee that they're going to survive. So I guess in a way, this work is a bit like a warning that even the common ones aren't safe. Um, and if we don't preserve the environment, even they will go and they'll join the roll call of the departed, which is, which is there. Is there an element of art you enjoy working with the most and why? Uh, you mean... Um, making the videos. Oh, well, what's happened? the most exciting part that you really enjoy the way you're making video art? <laughs> oh, I love going out and finding beautiful things, <laughs> like um, the trees. I love uh, trying to get the bird sounds, having my ear tuned to hearing the bird sounds and following that. Yeah. But one of the difficulties in doing that anywhere in the country, even, even way out in the bush, is that there's so much noise pollution. It's really hard to find an environment anywhere where there's not some sort of background mechanical noise. Cars, tractors, chainsaws, whipper <laughs> snippers, you know, even way out in the bush. Uh, so it's, yeah, noise pollution as well as air and water. Um, how do you find yourself a place in mix with other Asian female artists in the art world? Do, do you enjoy working with people from different ethnic backgrounds? Oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, I absolutely enjoy working with people from different ethnic backgrounds. One of the reasons I love teaching at Western Sydney University was that we had a very multicultural student body and the richness of stories, the richness of identities in that community was um, like a joy to work with and I've always, always enjoyed that. Um, I've worked a lot in the past in Japan and in more recent times I've worked um, a lot in Thailand and formed very strong friendships with both women and men artists, uh, especially in Thailand. What do you think about uh, this exhibition as a dialogue between uh, Australian and Chinese uh, female artists? Well, I think um, the exhibitions are really important exhibition because it brings together really diverse uh, artists and artworks. Um, and I think one of the things that I feel is at the base of, uh, of this exhibition, well, there are two things, actually, and one is uh, the Buddhist notion that everything is interconnected and that we can't continue to pollute the air and the water and the earth and think that we're not going to be affected by it. Uh, all of us are. And the, and the other thing that's at the base of this exhibition, as I see it, is ecofeminist who also state that everything is connected and the patriarchal systems that have run the planet so far have marginalised and commercialised and uh, ruled women as well as the planet, seeing seen women and the planet as 
commodities. So I think the exhibition, look at Anza Holker's work, in that respect you can look at Cindy's work in relation to the, the Buddhist notion of interconnection and her, you know, perhaps mine too at a deeper kind of level. Our last question is, what advice would you give to young artists or people who love art? <laughs> Follow your passion. Follow your passion. If you really want to make art, then get the best kind of training you have, which will give you the foundation for going forward. And especially for young women artists, your life, life will draw you away from art continually. And you need to develop an, an internal kind of strength to keep you making art. And um, so getting good training, finding colleagues who will support you um, is really important. And look for role models who you can um, follow. But part of that inner strength is saying things like, um, I need to be at the studio for X number of hours a week and I go there even if I haven't got anything in particular to do. And it may be that I go there just to tidy up, <laughs> but if I'm not there, I can't make art. Um, so I need to go there, maybe tidy up, maybe make some art, but one has to be quite strict about that. But I suppose the other thing is you need a community. Um, that's what I'm saying. But find colleagues that can help support you, that you can show with. You know, for some young people it may not be making art, it may be writing about art or curating. Um, and talking about curating, I also like to thank Nicholas Soutis for um, curating this fabulous exhibition and showing he's also ongoing support for women artists. About 10 years ago, I went to China, I went to China to um, Shanghai to visit a friend of mine. Um, and one of the things that I really wanted to do, it had been like an ambition of mine for many, many years, was to go to Shuzhou to see the Scholars' Gardens. And the reason for that was, I mean, they're amazing world heritage Chinese gems, those gardens, unbelievable. But the reason I wanted to go was that the way that gardens are designed in many countries are uh, often lessons to installation artists about how you can use space. Thomas Gardens um, have been around for centuries. For centuries more, people studied and thought about how to put objects in space to get the space moving well to highlight the objects. And this was the reason I wanted to go to those gardens, to, you know, see that really rich cultural history in China. And that becomes an inspiration for all your later artworks. Absolutely, inspiration for later artworks, yeah. Okay. Has this piece been influenced by Super Oh, well, not, ex not directly, but um, this sort of study of, of the gardens and ideas of placement and asymmetrical placement, so that kind of thing. You know, in the art world we talk about atmospheric perspective in, in traditional Chinese art, which offers a lot more kind of freedom than the rigidity of, of uh, linear perspective in the West. So I was much more interested in that kind of, that kind of thing. Yeah, so... form part of my self-education. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Thank you.